I have a list here. Z. Z is equal to a list. And I'm going to make it equal to A, B, C, D, like so. Close friends. Take a look at Z. Each one of the individual elements is now enclosed within the same quote. So there's my list. Now what I want to do is I want to make a rather cool comprehension to make a list within that curlies. And what I want to do is I want to walk through that list with the variable x. So as it walks through, this, this list takes A, puts it into X, then it puts B into X, then C into X. I want to see whatever is in X, and I also want to see the word none. And I want that to happen for every X as it walks through Z. So I stipulate that in this way for every X in the Z. Close the curlies and close the squares. Hit enter. And there we go. A none, B none, C none, and D none. Notice this is not in alphabetical order because this is a dictionary. And so we call this a dictionary comprehension. Now I'd like to make this smaller so it can fit on the screen a little bit better. I'll get rid of that D there, and then I'll run the comprehension again. Still a little bit too big for a screen. Let's get rid of a C. Good. And then we'll do the comprehension. A none, B none. What if I want to see three rows of this? I'd have to put in another looping structure. How would I go about doing that? Well, let's start by creating another variable called rows. I'll just call it r. r is equal to range. Range will be from 0 through 3. Now, because this is a range, it's going to range from 0 up to, but not including the last number here. So it'll do three of them, 0, 1, and 2. So once again, I need another loop in here. I want to see x and none, but I want to see three rows of them. How do I go about doing that? Well, I take this comprehension here, this dictionary comprehension, click inside, right in between the curlies and the square brackets, because I want to put another loop right here. I'm going to say for every y in r. So I want to see this output 0, 1, 2 times. That's 3 times. How did I do that? I stipulated the first loop will be for x and z, z being this fellow here, and then I want to do it this many times. I want to do all of this this many times for y in r. That's three times. All right, let's see what happens now. Oh, ugly, very ugly. I have to fix this. From pprint, import pprint as pp. No, I'll key in. Same thing again, but this time I'll be a little bit smarter. I'll assign this to a variable c. c equals that. Now if I key in c, it's going to look very ugly. But if I now use the that pp variable from pprint, which I refer to as pp now, and I'm going to key in pp, and what do I, what do I want to do to pp on? On c. <laughs> that sounds bad. And here we go. Oh, that looks very nice now. So I see A none, B none, one, two, three times. It looks rather nice. This is George Bull. Please read and share this video, and good luck.